Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 5, Episode 7, titled Asian Cut. It originally premiered on January 13th, 1989. We're in a new year. <laughs> yeah. Confetti <laughs> falls from the ceiling. 89 was a terrible year, by the way, so just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> hope no one you know was born that year <laughs> stand by my original <laughs> statement the writer for this episode is robert ward who also wrote redemption in blood who we just saw you know you know just like a few weeks ago <laughs> he's got eight more episodes coming he's gonna write eight more episodes this season i don't know how i feel about that i'm <laughs> i'm torn <laughs> I was torn when we first stopped watching this episode, but now I've had some time to think about it. I actually really liked it because it has like a classic noir story where yeah, it's, it's true. a double, double cross. Yeah, it's a double, double. Yeah. I okay. liked it, but I do have a little bit of a pet peeve at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So perfect. Perfect. Because that's when Vice is at its best. The director is James Contner. This is the only episode he ever directed, but he was also the director of photography for Crime Story. Really? Hmm. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Mm, yeah. All right, John, we've had a few weeks in a row here where we've had some, like, huge music guests. But this week's a little different. Yeah, it's not like guys. No, no. <laughs> I think we're just going to kind of, you know, kind of run through pretty quick and just try and get it over with. <laughs> uh, we have Under the Milky Way by The Church. You might remember The Church. The Church, they appeared in, in the episode Heart of the Night, which was just a few episodes ago. So, like we were just talking about them. They were an Australian new wave rock band formed in 1980, but Stephen Kilby, singer bass, and Peter Copes, they first played together uh, in the mid 80s in a glam rock band called Baby Grand. You think they wore makeup in Baby Grand? <laughs> They're a glam rock band. I'm sure they did if it's glam rock. I mean, pretty much nothing's changed in, what, two, three episodes? All in all, mainstream success kind of proved elusive for them. They did retain a, a pretty large international cult following. They sold most of their stuff in Australia and Europe. They sold a bit in the U.S., but first, uh, like after their first album, they got signed by a U.S. label, but then their second album sucked, and so the label dropped them. <laughs> so, but it sold well in Australia. It totally did. But yeah, let's not go through all that. Let's talk about, here it is, Take It by the That Petrol Emotion. You guys know that <laughs> petrol motion. Oh, yeah. Everyone knows them. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were formed in Dury, Northern Ireland by John O'Neill and uh, Raymond Gorman. You know, that petrol emotion, not the other one. <laughs> they released five albums between 1986 and 94. The other members include Sierra McLaughlin. Not Sarah McLaughlin. Sierra <laughs> McLaughlin. I was going to say, I, really? Dollar store version. The, the, the yes, Netflix yes. Uh, straight to streaming version of the blockbuster. You know, not like Transformers, yes. but like Transmorphers. <laughs> Uh, 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 John O'Neill's brother Damon O'Neill would tag along <laughs> and they would also get this Yank vocalist named Steve Mack the band is made up from former members of other dairy bands it's like The Undertones Bam Bam, The Calling, and Dairy Hitmakers combined garage rock with its music. Go back, way back in time, to 1986, just a wee baby. John O'Neill had just split up with the undertones, so he went home to Dairy uh, in Ireland, his hometown, and he teamed up with fellow guitarist uh, Raymond Gorman. And they were going to work as DJs at the uh, Dairy's Left Bank Club. You know, dream high, dream big. <laughs> so they, they would be in Inspired by the records that they would play DJing and they would form a band. So they would bring in McLaughlin, who was a former Undertone member. O'Neill would bring in his brother, Damien, who would, believe it or not, Damien O'Neill would turn down an opportunity to join Dex and the Midnight Runners <laughs> in order to join this band with his brother. Yeah, Whoops. yeah, he could have been Dex and the Midnight my, Midnight Runners. He could have been set for life. I mean, <laughs> come on, Eileen. <laughs> All those hits afterwards, too. I mean, they just kept pumping them out. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, come on, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and also... I don't know any other Dex and the Midnight Runners songs. I don't know I'm any either. I'm dead honest with you. <laughs> I don't think they have any. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Damien O'Neill didn't join the band. 
right. After they got the band together, they would move to London in 84 in order to work with Seattle-born Steve Mack, singer extraordinaire, <laughs> who was at the time working at a pizzeria, like most great singers do. <laughs> Can you believe they moved to London to work with a guy working at a pizzeria? Like, that must have been the greatest sell job of all time. <laughs> no, guys, I can't come to Northern Ireland, but you guys got to come here to London and work with me. No, we're going to be great. I'm a fantastic singer. Just meet me at Bill's Pizzeria um, <laughs> after six because I work till six. <laughs> they would first be signed by Demon Records in 86 and release debut album Manic Pop Thrill. It would chart number one on the UK indie charts. Uh, it would get rave reviews and would get them a little bit more mainstream record deal. And their second album, Babel, would actually break the UK top 40 album chart. After the second album, they would start to get a little bit political. IRA stuff was said. I'm waiting, John, for you to break in with, and then they became big in Australia. Because we've had a real string going <laughs> exactly. here of people who are big in Australia. <laughs> Well, you know, I can't say that their home sales weren't good in Australia, but I can't say they weren't bad either. <laughs> I am willing to bet that a band, um, that this band is prob probably did sell pretty well from Australia. <laughs> but unfortunately, after getting a little bit political and coming into their third album, John O'Neill would randomly announce his departure from the band. He would hang along around long enough to record their third album, which people and critics wouldn't like. They would say it was confusing, kind of sucked. John O'Neill's heart wasn't into it. O'Neill leaves. Band members kind of shuffle around, including Damon O'Neill, you know, the guy that could have been famous with Dex and the Midnight <laughs> Runners. Yeah, he changes from bass, which he had moved to, to accommodate the band to his natural position as guitarist, taking over for his brother. Few other ships and, and moves around, and they would come out with their fourth album, Chem Crazy, uh, Chemi Crazy, which is produced by Scott Litt, who produced R.E.M.'s Green Album. So of course, this is going to be fantastic. They changed a little bit to an alt-rock style. Like, who needs John O'Neill, really? I mean, come no, on. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, he was holding everyone back, actually. Exactly, exactly. Unfortunately, it would stall at about number 62 on UK charts and would be even more disappointing us on the sales end and would also lead to the end of their contract with Virgin Records, lose mm -hmm. their contract as well. They would do a little bit more shuffling. They would fire bassist John Marchini. They had hired it as part of the shuffling because it was all his fault. Yes. I mean, it's always on the bassist's shoulders. I mean, I, yeah, I, you know, yeah. I, I, I take that back. You know. Take that back. Hey, Sometimes the bassist is John the Mar <laughs> like Roger Waters. Yeah, poor John Marchini. I mean, he had to fill Damien O'Neill's shoes <laughs> because he switched the guitar. So he had to fill Damien's shoes. And I mean, that guy could have been in Dex in the Midnight Runners. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1993, they released their fifth album, Fireproof. Which would once again come full circle like their debut and reach number one on UK indie charts. Uh, but, you know, would still wouldn't perform very well as far as sales. And as a result, the band would break up in 94. So they would all do a bunch of other bands and projects. Like, you know, they'd all split off and join other bands. None of which really stuck out when I went through them. Like, none of them jumped out to me. It was like, oh, and they became famous in this band. It was like, no, no, never heard of you. Never heard of you. In 2008, they got a reunion together and toured from 08 to 2010. 10. Now, mind you, when I say reunion, I mean all of the band members from the fifth album reunited, oh. not, not John O'Neill. We don't need John O'Neill. It's not like the whole band went down the tubes as soon as John O'Neill checked out. But they would speak again, and then 2012, Gorman, McLaughlin, Kelly, and o Damian O'Neill would start a new band. Screw you guys. Screw that <laughs> petrol emotion. We're going to start a new band, and that band is called The Everlasting Yeah. <laughs> Another great name. So that's your music. Unfortunately, why Dex and the Midnight Runners never went any further than Come On Eileen. See, they it, missed their it, opportunity. They, uh, if only Damien. <laughs> they missed their opportunity. They should have followed the church and just focused all their effort on Australia. Yes. 
They'll, yeah. they'll literally listen to anything down there. Which, uh, to, get, to be, to give the church credit, and I know I kind of blew them off because I literally just talked about them like two episodes ago. As of 2017, the church released their 25th studio album. Whatever kangaroos or whatever currency they use in Australia, <laughs> they're making a bank load of it down there. Whatever, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're loaded. They've got like a hundred million dungaroos, so they're set. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, gowiththeheat at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about Trudy episodes, especially this one. What is your favorite Trudy episode, and so where do you think this one fits we had some things that we nitpicked over here, not necessarily like being a bad story, but about what's up with Sunny giving her the how could you do this kind of look. Let us know what your thoughts on the are on that kind of thing, especially what John's saying about the mannequins. Did that bother you like it bothers John? <laughs> Email us, goalwiththeheat at gmail.com. Be sure to check out that website, goalwiththeheat.com. Find all the ways to subscribe, all the ways that you can contact us. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we've had a bunch of new people follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You want to find our Instagram? Go to that website, goalwiththeheat.com. You can find the links to all of those things. You can also find the ways to support us. Support step number one, go leave us a review on your podcast, your platform of choice, especially iTunes. That would be a big help for us to help people find the show if you could go leave us a review on iTunes. Just go ahead and give us five stars. No one's going to know that I told you to give us five stars, but don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Instead, write in that review what your favorite role is of Sandy in this episode but she still has more coming and she was with <laughs> hackman before what's your favorite role of hers write that review right there inside of that inside of itunes instead of writing your real review support step number two check out that patreon patreon.com slash go with the heat you can find all the ways that you can support us this show is coming to an end as far as miami vice goes and we'd love to continue to do that we would love to see your support and just launched this week on patreon a brand new show that's a patron exclusive that is an extended version of This Week in Vice. So if you love our This Week in Vice companion show that talks about everything that was going on in the 80s when this show aired, when this ep when this episode aired, subscribe to that Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You get access to all the bonus content, including the brand new This Week in Vice extended version. And you get all the episodes early. And you can get a custom RSS for all of the custom stuff that comes with your Patreon. So that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal.